chapter 9, in which we may have bit off a bit more than we can chew. Oh, it's going to turn crazy. Dilemio took us to F's mansion. I tried talking to Rover during the ride, but the henchman forced us to stop. No conversation. Don't make me taunt you with an invisible tennis ball. I hate it when humans use those things on me. No idea what's going to happen. Once we arrived, the henchman led us inside to a drawing room. A shadowy figure awaited us. Who have we got? Whoa. Rover, nice to meet you face to face. Is that F? Yeah, that's me. You scoundrel, give me back my citizenship papers and stop interfering with my campaign. Interfering? I rather think I helped your campaign. Stealing all that money from Thunderpaw wasn't easy, you know. You should be thanking me. Wait, you're the one who robbed him? Oh, did Abigail not mention that to you? Uh, that's how we were able to afford all those political ads. We used the money that F sent us. You used dirty money to help the campaign? I didn't have a choice. F forced me to do it. He said he'd kill me if I didn't. She's right. I did threaten to kill her. In fact, I probably will end up killing both you and Abigail. I can't have you standing in the way of my plans. What are his plans? You maniac. Yeah, I've read lots of mystery novels and the bad guys always tell every aspect of their plans to the hero at the very end, right before the hero escapes and gets the police. Do... Don't you know who I am? No. Nuh -uh. Not... Not the slightest clue, not even a guess. A confused video game programmer? <laughs> well... When I ran to be presidential campaign for New Clausia, there were rumours about an FCAT running against me, but nothing ever came of it. I figured that was you, but I don't know any more information. Yeah, that's me, and no, it's not. I. All the effort I put into becoming an evil supervillain wasted. You two don't have any clue who I am or what I'm plotting. Henchman, turn on the lights. Who is it then? It's a doggy. Do you recognise me now? It's Fido. You're a dog. Not just any dog, my name is Fido. My half-brother? <laughs> Hold on a second, you can't just introduce a new relative at the end of a mystery when he's never even been mentioned until just now, that's totally cheating. This isn't a mystery novel though, and you didn't mention me at all to your campaign manager, Rover. Why did you do that? I haven't heard from you in years, and besides, I kind of mentioned you. I said that my mum moved the entire family to America when we were pups. Oh yeah, you did say something about that. But you should have mentioned your half-brother is a weird black man and psycho. I'm not a psycho. I'm trying to get justice for dogs everywhere and the only way to do that is if I become president. Hell, you're not even in the running. You ran unopposed New Clawshare. What happens if you drop out of the presidential race? New Clawshare has no candidate to represent it. Normally, that would be true. But I found a lo loophole in the law. If Rover resigns from the race, he can pick a replacement to take it. So that's your plan. You want me to resign and pick you as my replacement? If you don't, I'll work my legal magic and come up with a replacement automatically because I've got like five different people to vote for me as a writing candidate. That makes me the second place winner of New Clawshire. I understand your evil plan now. You'll take over for me as the New Clawshire candidate and ride on my success to victory. Yeah, I shall be president no matter what. And you, you killed Rover's previous campaign manager. That was a mistake. I made some adjustments to my plan since then. She was a living person and you killed her with paper clips, you're a monster. And I'll never let you take my place as New Clausia's candidate, never. Have it your way, henchman, send the email I'll write to all the major news networks. You can't, that will ruin the campaign. He's going to ruin the campaign no matter what, Abigail. I refuse to cooperate on his terms. Send the emails. What's going on? Tick tock, you two, make a decision. Let's trick him. You may think you hold all the cards, but you don't. You don't have all the information yet. Oh, what don't I know? For starters, you don't know that Rover is my husband, right? Husband? Oh yeah, yeah. We went to Paul's Vegas and got a drive through wedding. Now I'm legally an American citizen by marriage and by naturalization. You can't use the Born in Dagonia loophole to ruin my campaign anymore. Yeah, and besides, aren't you from Dagonia too? That rule should apply to you as much as it applies to him. Curses, but there's still the fact that you're a dog pretending to be a cat. I'm legally a cat and not a dog, and that's due to those legal loopholes that you seem to love so much. Yeah, he wasn't lying about his species, he really is registered as a cat. What? No, I refuse to let some quickie marriage stop me from becoming president. 
You want to be president? Here's a presidential joke for you. It comes straight from Abraham Lincoln. How many legs does a dog have if you call the tail a leg? Five. Four. Calling the tail a leg doesn't make it a leg. Just like how calling you a candidate doesn't make you one. Well, this is why you're my least favourite relative. Very well. If you won't cooperate, and if you have the legal work fixed, which I doubt, you leave me no choice but to kill you. Release the attack dogs. <laughs> what? This is, this is getting out of hand. Henchman, what are you waiting for? Release the attack dogs. But you are the attack dog, your evilness. I can't win a fight against Rover, he's stronger than me. And he always beat me when we wrestled as puppies. <laughs> you got no backup. Hey, it looks like we had the villain on the ropes in mystery books. This is always the moment where the hero does something clever. Should I try it? Uh. Um, let's do something clever. Hey, I need to go to the bathroom. Is it okay I'll leave and come back and maybe I'll take my phone with me? Sure, whatever. Just don't bother me. I'm busy making evil plans. Stupid. <laughs> it's just gonna sneak out to the toilets. I went to the bathroom and called the police. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, Fido and his henchmen were arrested for kidnapping us and for murdering Diana. They started shouting about Rover being a dog, but the police didn't pay any attention to it. The officer in charge of the case is hoping to charge Fido for taking $20 million for the Thunderpearl campaign. They don't yet know if this counts as theft or election fraud. After the police finished questioning us, Rover and I went out for ice cream to celebrate. He got peppermint bark. Good stuff. We're safe. You did it. What are you talking about? You're the one who thought that getting married would stop F's evil plan. But you're the one who got the idea to pretend it. That was so brilliant. First you did that big speech and now this. How do you handle yourself so well under pressure? I don't know, I just do, I guess. I knew I couldn't let them hurt you, so I had to do something. You saved my life, and I will love you forever for this. Thank you, Abigail. Rover got up on his hind legs and licked me on the face over and over. It was adorable. Isn't Rover the cutest doggy ever? <laughs> Chapter 10, in which Rover comes clean to the public, but he still has one more secret. Well, he goes nothing. You sure you want to go through with this? I'm sure. What happened yesterday convinced me that I have to tell the truth. In the giant press conference, though, it's like taking off a bandage. You want to get it over with in one clean pull. Uh, I admire your bravery, Rover. I wish I could be a as brave as you are. Funny, I was thinking that you would make me a braver dog. I hugged Rover, then I watched as he stepped out in front of the cameras. Oh, is he going to reveal himself? Hello ladies and gentlemen of the press, I have asked you to come here tonight because I have an important announcement to make. I am not the candidate I have made myself out to be, not entirely. I spent a good deal of my campaign talking about the problems with the Dagonian immigration system. The truth is, I have first poor experience of these problems because I am from Dagonia. Oh, is that shock? My family moved here when I was very young and they applied to me to become an American citizen but there is a problem. The immigration officer accidentally put down the wrong species on the paper. I am a dog, and I have always been the dog, but according to law, I am a cat. I am in the strange position of being both a dog and a cat at the same time. I have been running for the president as a cat, because there has never been a dog president. I believe that with the help of the voters, this will change. This will bring equality and fairness to the country. We will no longer give special protections and privileges to either species. Dogs and cats are equally good pets, and it's time to end the pet wars for the good of the country. Thank you for listening, Meow. Woof. Any questions? If you're both cat and dog, does that make you some kind of super pet? Do you have like superpowers and can you fly and stuff? No, I cannot fly. Would you like the ability to fly or would you prefer a different superpower like enhanced senses or x-ray vision? I already have enhanced senses. I can smell 50,000 times better than a human. Wow, Rover, the super pet. I always wanted to write a superhero movie. Maybe I can get this news article picked up by a movie studio. If you're a cat and a dog, do you sometimes get the urge to chase yourself? No comment. He might chase his tail. I'm suspicious of that. But I don't understand how it works. Are you trying to say that your mother was a cat and your father was a dog? No, my parents were both dogs from Dagonia. Dagonia, that's a funny way of pronouncing America, Rover. Can you tell us why you're revealing the information now in the middle of the primary season? I recently had an encounter with my half-brother and convinced me to publicly discuss my dog heritage. Plus, I'm also talking about it because of a woman named Abigail. 
Me? What are you talking about me? She's my campaign manager. Her honesty and uprightness are an inspiration to me. Got a question. What about your wife? What does she have to say about this? My wife. Oh yeah, I do not have a wife. She died. Oh no, we're so sorry. <laughs> do you have any words of grieving to say about your wife's untimely death? No, you misunderstood. She was, no, she was never one of the... To let people mourn over her. Got it, thanks. Seriously. She didn't exist. <laughs> Rover stays strong and continues campaigning after the sudden death of his wife. What a great candidate. This story is going to make me tons of money. Thanks, Rover. Uh, you're welcome, but that's not exactly what I was saying. Got away with it, though. The news conference came to an end after that, even though Rover had more to say. The reporters insisted that he couldn't report more on than two things at once, and that would overwhelm and confuse the public. Ah, uh, they just want the in a nutshell. That's all they want. So all they talked about was the death of Rover's wife and Rover being a dog. I'm kind of happy they ignored the story about us being kidnapped. Actually, that was a horrifying experience. On the other hand, Rover was not happy about the news reports. Not at all. What did they write? This is ridiculous. None of the stories get the facts right at all. Half of them are sensationalized things that took my statements out of context. The other half doesn't even try and back up their claims with evidence. Yeah, you have read a newspaper lately, haven't you? <laughs> Uh, sorry. It's not your fault, but look at this article. Rover is a cat-dog super pet. It tells about my origin story, saying I got cat-dog superpowers from my alien parents on planet Dokatia. That must have been done by the reporter who wants to write a movie. And this one says I got extensive reconstructive surgery after being run over by a car. This one says I have shape-shifting powers, and this one accuses me of making everything up in order to get the dog vote. Did anyone listen to what I said about the paperwork error? I don't know. Paperwork errors are boring. I guess it's more fun to pretend that you're a new type of animal species. I prefer it if they reported the truth. I was trying to make a statement about immigration policies and legal issues, not a statement about cats and dogs fusing together. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but I think this is great news. You've got cat supporters and dog supporters from all over the country now. No more having to worry about dog racists messing up your campaign. Great. I never wanted their votes anyway. Oh, there's your lesson. There's your moral lesson right there. I know, I mean, yeah, some people were mad at you that you're a dog and they left, but we got loads of new supporters to replace them, like 50 times as many new supporters. What? Let me see those stats. Not only do you have a lot of new dog supporters, pretty much everyone is responding positively to the story about your wife's death. But I never had a wife. People don't seem to care about that. <laughs> they say they feel a deep emotional connection to you now. We're getting all sorts of compliments for what you're doing. Like, here's a comment. He's so brave, going on the campaign trail while grieving his dead wife. You'd never have known that his wife had just died based on his actions. I wish all our politicians were this strong and focused on the country. And here's another, such a tragic story, cut down in the prime of life. She will certainly be missed by her loving husband and his fans. We are always here for you, Rover. And that's not the point. The point is I don't have a wife. I never did. I'm not grieving her death because she didn't die. She's fictional. <laughs> I know, it's weird. But people are super sad she died in a fire hydrant accident. A fire hydrant accident? That's how people think she died, very sad if you ask me. I can't handle it. Now I've got to hold another press conference to tell everyone the truth about my wife, or they'll get mad and say I was lying to them. There's no winning with this. I think you've already won. You have more voters than ever, since everyone knows you're single now, and people are surprisingly okay with the idea of a dog running for president. I guess you're right. Thank you for being positive while I'm just complaining. No problem, that reminds me. Earlier, you said that my honesty and uprightness are an inspiration. Did you really mean that? Of course I did. I lied about my identity as a dog, but you, you always tell the truth. That's really good of you. I wish I could be that good. Let's accept the... Yeah, don't patronise him. You're being too nice. I'm not that good. I mean, you're just as good as I am. Really? Yeah, that's why voters are responding to you. They say that you're an honest candidate who's not afraid of admitting their mistakes, and the truth is... Oh, I'm really proud. You did a great job with the oppressed, even if the news reports weren't what you expected. Thanks, I feel a lot better now. Sorry for complaining so much earlier. That's okay, we're a team, right? We stick together through good times and bad. I want to talk to you about that. Actually, I mean, about us. What's that? Now that everyone knows I'm single, and that trick where you pretend to be my wife, it got me thinking. What's that? Here we go. Based on your responses throughout the game, you unlocked... I've cheated once. I've cheated once. I'll admit that. Good ending. That's all good. What is it, Rover? I was thinking that you might actually be a good wife. You what? 
Did I offend you? I'm sorry, I'll take it back. Forget anything I said. No, I'm not offended, I'm just surprised. Do you think I'd be a good wife? Of course, you're a good person. And the qualities you need to succeed in life are the same qualities you need to succeed in marriage. But my parents always told me that love is all you need to make marriage work. Love is important, but not everything. You need openness and attention, a willingness to work through problems and deal with other people, even though you're upset with them. And that's you all over. You think so? What did you do when you found out I was a dog? You were mad, sure, but you didn't quit the campaign in a fit of anger. You stuck by me during the tough moments, even when we're kidnapped. It's rare to see that kind of loyalty today. And dogs, dogs do like a bit of loyalty, let's, let's face it. But you are loyal, not to go into dog stereotypes, but you're as loyal as they come. I mean, you could have abandoned me when f and left Fido to kill me. I couldn't have done that. It would have been unconscionable. Oh, good word. See, that's what I like about you. You can't bear the thought of me getting hurt. And you're always using big words I don't understand. You're so smart. Nonsense. If I'd been smart, I'd have told you the truth from the start. Better late than never, my dad always said. And I understand why you didn't spill your deepest, darkest secrets to me. Back when we were total strangers. That would have been stupid. No, it would have been foolish to pretend I don't care about you. Because I do. A lot. And I care about you, Rover. You're my friend. And I... Oh, you are... No, I don't want to be just your friend, Rover. Almost getting killed made me realise how fragile my life is. And I won't want to waste time beating around the bush. The truth is, I want to date you, Rover. I want to be your girlfriend. You do? Yep, I've loved you for a long time now. Almost two weeks! Can't we just stop the games and start dating already? Oh... No. No? <laughs> no. We have to do it correctly. We can't just decide with boyfriend and girlfriend. We have to go on the date first. Several dates, actually. Then we decide if we want to take the relationship. Forget that. I want you as my boyfriend. Nah. <laughs> That's it. I pick up Rover and kiss him passionately. And when I put him back down, he seemed dazed and confused. Wow. That was... My goodness. Kissing dogs. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little over-emotional there. Oh, kissing on the first date? It's going to be a, a, a tumultuous relationship. I don't care what kind of relationship it is, as long as it's with you. I love you, Abigail. I love you too. Rover. Rover and I dropped everything and went on our first date at a local dog park. He was the one who picked the location, naturally. I picked the place for our second date and our third date too. We went on dates pretty much every day. Okay, so they weren't really dates, but we just call them that. It made our work sound so much more interesting because running a campaign is a lot of work. So much work, in fact, that I hired an assistant. Who did you hire? Mr. Drew! <laughs> you don't really need an assistant. You just want me to do all your work so you can focus on being Rover's girlfriend. See, that's why you'd be a great campaign manager assistant. You're so smart. You always see the truth in every situation. Will you do it? How much do I get paid? I've got your first paycheck right here. Have a look at this. Hmm. Add another zero and I'll do it. <laughs> oh! Nice, good deal. Mr. Jude took over as campaign manager after that, which is fine by me. I didn't really do all that much campaign manager work anyway. Thanks to Mr. Drew, Rover won New Class year by a landslide. Three of his opponents dropped out of the race by that point, and he won South Carolina with equal numbers. Rover went on to be picked as the sharp call candidate in the general election. His opponent was a cat named Muffin. She claimed that Rover was deceiving Americans, and he was trying to abuse his status as a dog in order to get more votes. Mr. Drew successfully managed to change the discussion topic onto Muffins' military record, sort of. The debate had been going back and forth for months now, and I'm pretty sure everyone was sick of it at this point, but they keep talking about it nonetheless. I'm more excited about my boyfriend Rover, he's the best boyfriend ever. Uh, whenever I enter the room, his eyes light up and his tail wags, and he gives an excited little bark. I secretly hope he proposes soon, and I've dropped a few hints about it, what can I say? All that talk about his fake wife is making me eager to be his real wife. I'm not sure if marriage is possible because dogs are only allowed to marry other dogs. Maybe he'll undergo the surgery to turn himself human before the wedding. I won't complain if he does. I thought that was only for cats. But if the current polls are to be believed, he's going to win the White House by 8% this November. We'll have to postpone the wedding until after that. Wouldn't it be amazing if I became the first lady of the United States? That would be so great. Rover and I would be famous. And we could really help make the world a better place. I'm really looking forward to the future now. I know it will be a good future because Rover and I will face it together. That romance. <laughs> yeah, and that is the end of the Rover route for Cat President. So it was less Cat President and yeah, it was a Dog President. And 
we married the dog. <laughs> so that was the good ending. And yeah, there's only one more story to go. DJ Nibbles coming soon. I hope. I have to record it. And <coughs> yeah, my throat's gone. So yeah, this is Ushio signing off. And hopefully I will see you next time for some DJ Nibbles action.